Hey again guys, welcome to episode number 10 of The Fix. Today we're going to look at a photo um, that I posted May 7th, um, and this one is was taken in Switzerland, and it's called the Chapel Bridge in Lucerne, Switzerland. Um, pretty self-explanatory on that one. Um, so here it is, if you want to read a little bit more about it, um, head to the website, findawayphotography.com, and, um, and that's where you'll find it. So what we're going to do is go into... Um, Kind of the behind the scenes editing of this one and i'll show you how i gave it this look so we'll head over to light room light room that's where all the magic's going to happen um, and so on the original photo um, what i had done is i took took three photos um, and you can see the three here one uh, normally exposed one two stops underexposed and one two two stops overexposed and this is um, combining these three three photos together is you know, what we call HDR. Um, it's a pretty common practice now and it basically takes the the highlights and the shadows from all three of them and puts them all, all kind of together and um, you end up with a higher dynamic range. And so um, in the original photo I had actually used um, a program um, called Photomatics and today um, instead of using that I'm going to try something a little bit different. You could do the same thing um, but today, I'm just going to use the built-in function in Lightroom. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I just select the three of them. I go down to Photo Merge. I go to HDR. And there's a few other options. Um, you can you can do it right in Lightroom like this. You can do it in um, Photomatics, the one that I'd mentioned before. Or a new kind of personal favorite of mine is um, Aurora HDR. Um, so today, just to mix things up, I'm going to show you just the straight in Lightroom thing. And so I go auto align. This wasn't taken on a tripod, it was just handheld. Um, de ghost, um, I'll just go low. Um, all this does is um, things that move in the photo, like uh, this boat, maybe cars, people, that sort of thing. It just takes um, a still from one of the photos and uses that instead of um, kind of having that someone streaking through it and they end up being kind of ghost like because. They're at different state, you know, different places throughout the frame um, in the three different pictures. So you end up with kind of a ghost traveling through the photo. So i um, not sure why, but it's not letting me go to low. Um, but there's nothing that really needs to ghost it anyway. So we're just going to leave that. And then you just, just hit merge. And that's going to take the three photos and spit out one single one. So that's it. So that's our HDR. And you can see it has um, a little bit more detail in the shadows and the highlights compared to these these other three. So it's kind of taken the best of um, the three worlds. And now let's just head back here really quick. And I'm going to show you kind of the aim for the photo. So with a photo like this, it was taken middle of the day. The light wasn't great. I didn't have a tripod. It was just kind of um, as I was walking past this bridge, I just took the photo and it ended up being pretty cool. So I like the composition with the, the old bridge cutting through the scene, um, the river flowing through the middle of the town, some of these cool buildings on the far side, um, and the color from the flowers and that sort of thing. So that's what we're going to try to accentuate in the photo. Um, so there's lots of, lots of color and that sort of thing, but because it was taken middle of the day, um, the you know the color and the vibrance and the lighting isn't that great so instead um, I really like the look of this wooden bridge and that kind of gives me this feeling of old-fashioned um, kind of uh, that old European feel so I am going to tint it so so the tool in Lightroom that we use to do that is called split toning and so that's going to be kind of the main focus of this one um, so that's going to be the vision for the photo is just kind of taking it from from this one here and giving it kind of a tinted look so that it um, you know just has almost that sepia look um, so that's what we're going to be trying to do trying to do uh, make the bridge the highlight of the picture um, and bring out the colors and the flowers and that sort of thing um, so yeah that's kind of the goal and I'll, I'll show you how we do it now so I'm going to hit D on the keyboard that takes me over to the develop module and this is where we're going to um, do all the work on it and first thing I usually do on things like this is crop it. And I like to crop, uh, I think I'm going to crop up from the bottom, get that rail out of there. I still want to keep the boat um, in the side of the frame. I, everything up here looks good, and I'm good on this side as well. So I'm pretty happy with that one. 
I'm just going to bring it in just in case those edges um, from the three photos didn't line up when they, they aligned. So I just make sure there's no um, little white, white blank spaces or anything. So that to me looks pretty good. Um, I think the horizon, you can't really see a horizon, but I think everything looks pretty flat across the back. Cool. So that's the crop. And then we just get into the editing itself. So I'm going to start basically at the top of the develop modules here and just work my way all the way down. And the first thing is probably this, the temperature, that's going to be quite important. Um, and because we're tinting it, um, I don't need to bring out all the color by warming this up. Um, that's going to come from the tint itself. So instead, um, I'm going to add a bit of warmth to it. Um, so I'll drag that one up a little bit. Um, but then we're going to bring in all that color uh, later on through the split toning. Um, exposure, it's quite dark. So something like that, I'll bring it up a little bit. And that just slides that histogram to the right a little bit as well. You can see there's lots slumped up down here. Um, and we're going to work on that a little bit further as well. Um, contrast. Um, usually I actually like to, to bring the contrast down and kind of open up those colors a little bit. And then bring it back with the whites and blacks. But in this case, I think I'm just going to add a little bit. And you'll see you'll see where this is going. Um, and this is just going to add to that look of kind of that old um, rustic kind of feel. And so we'll keep going down down the ranks, um, this is gonna bring out all those details in the shadow, which again is gonna kinda add to that that um, gloomy sort of look. Um, shadows, I'll brighten that up, and that's where you know, we're finally gonna be able to get to see this bridge a little bit more um, and bring out some of the details in there. So shadows, we're actually gonna take this up quite a bit. Something like that, I think. And now we can start to see that bridge popping a little bit more. And then we'll keep uh, we'll keep an eye on the bridge and make sure that that's kind of the focus of it. Um, drawing your eye from left um, further into the into the photo, and then you kind of see these these in the background and that sort of thing. Um, whites, I think we'll brighten that up. You can see up on the histogram, I've got some room to move. So the Sliding the white slider to the right is going to brighten things up and bring this edge closer to the edge of the histogram where it's going to be cut off. So let's um, let's sneak this up a little bit. So something like that's getting pretty good. Getting close to um, starting to clip some of those, um, and then blacks as well. Um, we're actually going to bring that up. And this is where usually I would actually, I would actually think about um, pulling those blacks down to bring some of that contrast back in. But um, let's see, let's see where this gets us. It just kind of brightens it up a little bit and opens up some of those details. Um, and it also, you can see it was uh, being cut off a little bit on the left, and we brought those uh, black details back into the frame. And um, a bit of clarity to add that add that contrast they were talking about and give it kind of that grainy grunge sort of look and then some color so this is going to be a little bit more than i would usually do uh, but that's all right um, i like a little bit of color and pop and that sort of thing and then just a tiny bit of saturation so vibrance is going to bring out um, some of the colors but not all and then saturation is going to just top it off uh, for today we're going to skip over the tone curve in this picture um, but this panel here, the HSL panel, is definitely one of my favorites. Um, you can actually do, um, you can actually change up colors and change the hue of them and brighten or darken um, specific shades of color. So you get a, a huge amount of control from this panel. Um, and today we're just going to look at the saturation. And we'll, we're going to see what individual sliders, what we can do to bring out um, individual colors and, and make them pop. So there's a lot of red in, in the flowers and even in some of the buildings and that sort of thing. So let's um let's go ahead and, and bring those up a little bit. Orange, uh, why not? We'll see what happens here. A bit of yellow. Um, yeah, something like that, bringing out some of the yellow in the buildings. And again, we're going to tint everything anyway, so it's gonna it's gonna bring out um, its own kind of orangey color. Uh, but let's see what this does. Might bring that back down a little bit just so we have some room to tint it. Um, green, I don't know. Let's see, what's there for green? Yeah, some of the water, like that's pretty cool. So some of the water and those trees back there make those 
pop a little bit. Um, aqua, so that does kind of that water in the front of the frame, and then the mountains in the back. A little bit in the sky as well. I don't don't really like the look of that, but that's all right. We're gonna we're gonna tint over it. Um, blues. So blues is the boat. There's some blue in the flowers. Surprisingly, there's no blue in the water, which always takes you by surprise when you um, when you're playing around with these and you actually find out where some of those colors lie. Um, but we'll bring in a little bit of blue, um, purple. There's lots of purple in those flowers, so let's bring that out. Not too much, but something like that. And then magenta. Let's see where the magentas are. And again, some magenta in the flowers. So we'll bring that out. Cool. And this is um, the panel that um, that I really want to talk about today. And this is where we're going to do all of that, you know, all of that look. If we go back here and you see where where this photo is right now and where we're aiming, th a lot of a lot of this look is going to come right from the panel that we're doing doing right now. So um, highlights. So what happens, the reason they call it split toning is because you um, it splits the photo into highlights and shadows. So you can choose a color for the, the shadows, uh, sorry, the highlights. Um, you change the hue of it and the saturation, and then you can do a separate uh, tone or tint on the shadows. Um, so you can, you can kind of warm up or cool down the shadows if you want. And then on the other side, you can warm up or, or cool down the highlights and um, have control over them separately. So it's really cool. Um, so let's head into the highlights. And so this is going to be this area down in the water. Uh, some of the buildings back here, a lot in the sky. And so we're going to be kind of looking for, um, I think we're going to go for kind of this orangey, maybe a red. So let's, um, let's see. So Q, you know, somewhere around this, if you look down on the, on the bottom left corner of this panel that I'm in, uh, you can see the hue moving in degrees, so that's left to right, and then up and down controls the saturation. So this this controls which color you want. So I'm going to say somewhere around this 50 degrees, in between the the red, the yellow, and the orange, and that sort of thing. And then let's pick where we want to go up and down. So right around 50 degrees, and then I think somewhere around we're actually going to saturate it quite a bit. So 60 to 70, something like this. Cool. And so, and then you can come here and you can fine tune it. So if you wanted that hue to be, you know, whatever it is, exactly 50, say, you go ahead and enter that in there. And then that just kind of controls it and fine tunes it a little bit. Um, shadows will do the same thing. Um, hop into the shadows and we're going to, again, it's actually going to be a similar color, but just a little bit warmer in the shadows. And then we're um, not going to saturate it as much. So the shadows is actually going to be closer to you know, something like this. Cool. So and again, if you wanted to fine tune this, you know, you want it a little bit to the one side, something like that. Cool. Actually, I'm going to bring that down by 10, 57 and 19, something like that sounds good. And then this is the very last slider here, the balance, and that just changes the tone. Um, so from from shadows to highlights. So right now it's 50-50 split. Um, so these highlights, um, so what you can do is slide it all the way down to the shadows and then um, the color of the shadows is gonna also be the color of the highlights. So it's everything is toned to the shadows of the color and then you could also slide it this way. So now everything is toned the shadow of the highlights. And so if you, if you want a little bit more of that shadow of the highlights coming and seeping into the shadows, um, then you could slide it that way and then vice versa. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll keep it, let's see, kind of like the, the color of the highlights a little bit more. So I'll lean it a little bit that way. Cool. So I'm just going to hit Y on the keyboard and show you where we're heading. So this is, um, this is the before, so with no work done on it. And this is the after. So that's kind of the direction that we're going. Cool. And then uh, we'll do some sharpening and that sort of thing. I just pick a spot to zoom in and see some of those details and zoom, double check that I'm zooming one to one, which it is. So one pixel of the screen takes up exactly one pixel on the photo. And that's the best, best place to do your sharpening. And then we'll just play around with it. Um, something like that. I do want it to look really sharp. 
um, the radius, I've got lots of fine little details. So if I hold down the option key, I can see exactly the lines that are being sharpened. Something like that. And then I'm going to bring out lots of those details as well. Cool. And then head back out, see what we can mask out. So everything that's white is being sharpened, everything that, that's black isn't. So I don't want too much sharpening in the water or the sky, but everything in the bridge and the buildings in the back. So something like that. And then we'll just add a little bit of noise reduction to clean it up a little bit. I'm not too worried about that. Um, we'll check remove CA and do some profile corrections as well. And then um, let's darken these corners a whole bunch just to kind of bring that focus into, into this area. So I think something like that. And then roll that midpoint out just a little bit. Roundness, yeah, something like that, good enough. Cool, once again, we'll hit Y to see where, where we've come from and where we are now. Cool, and if we actually look here, you can see that we're pretty close. I've, I've done a little bit of different toning between these two pictures. Um, a little bit more green in here than the other one, but that's that's easy to fix, we could always I'm um, going to these shadows and maybe you know, bring in a little bit more of that browny kind of look. Just to just to double check to make sure that we're on the right track. Because um, normally I'd play around with it a little bit more, but for the um, idea of time, so we're at 54, 54, 48, 26. So 54, 54, 48, 26. Um, can't remember what those were again. 54, 54, 48, 26. So that's where the differences are coming from. Um, so 48, and then 26 for the, sh the uh, saturation. And so something like that. Um, gives you an idea of where, still not quite right. Something's a little bit different between them. Um, let's see, head back over here. Could always bring down this, um, the vibrance, maybe bring up a little bit of warmth and that sort of thing. That gives you an idea of how how I do the tinting and um, give it kind of that look, um, that kind of faded sepia look. Um, and then the last, I just want to brush in a little bit into these flowers. Um, so I'm just gonna gonna go and pick the extra pop preset as a starting point, just brush in into these flowers and see if we can make those pop just a little bit. Cool. So something like that. And lift those shadows maybe a bit. Open up the contrast. And I might, I'm just going to zoom in. So I go back here, I'm going to zoom in over here to the end. And we'll just paint in a little bit down here as well so that that stays uniform all the way through. Cool. All right, so that gives you, um, gives it a little bit of pop on those flowers. And then we'll go back here, close that panel again. Perfect. So done with that brush. Um, I think we're getting pretty close to pretty close to the finished photo here. I'm quite happy with it. Um, it's just a little bit of green that's coming through. I think I'm actually going to play around with this tint. Um, right now it's quite a ways to the left. I think if I just bring it back here, 
think that's where some of that green is coming from. So if I bring it something like that, and now if I hit Y, so you can see before and you can see after, I think that's a little bit better. That's, um, I think that's what was throwing me off is maybe this tint. I just played around with that a little bit. And so we'll check with the original one. So that's what the original looked like. And this is what the new one looks like um, that I've just shown you how to edit. And I think, I think that one's pretty close. Uh, so just a quick summary. Um, I just went through, the, you know, these settings, played around with it um, just to add some contrast, um, make sure that the, the shadows were nice and dark, um, make sure that the highlights were um, not blowing out or anything and had kind of these moody, gloomy skies. Um, we had a lot of, you know, kind of bad afternoon light, so it, it wasn't wasn't the best uh, photo to begin with. And so bringing in this tint to the sky and that sort of thing um, kind of, you know, brushes over that and it um, covers it up. Um, and then it gives this kind of an old-fashioned uh, rustic sort of look. And um, we played around with this panel quite a bit to bring out certain certain colors and make make some of the purples and magentas and reds and that sort of thing and these flowers pop a little bit. And then we spent some time down in the split toning panel. I'm um, just playing around with the tint of the highlights, tint of the shadows. Um, they're a little bit different, but still um, quite similar. So you can actually play around with this more and on different photos, um, you can make the shadows a totally different tint than the highlights and that, that can be quite a cool look. Did some quick sharpening, just like always, um, and brought in the corners with the vignetting. Uh, did a little bit of, um, you know, specific local adjustments in these flowers, just to brighten them up and bring out the pop and color. Um, and then we found the mystery, where the mystery green color was coming from, which was this tint here. So, um, so my bad for missing that in, at the beginning, but um, so that's something you can always play with, play around with as well if you find kind of a weird color showing through or something like that. Um, but that's um, that's it. So this is, um, this is episode number 10. And uh, thanks for joining me today. And I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks.